Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top five. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted that number one would be The Exorcist Believer, number two would be Paw Patrol The Mighty Movie, number three would be Saw X, number four would be The Creator, and number five would be The Nun 2, and I was so close. I was so, so close to getting all five of my predictions right. It was a four out of five win. Not a win, sorry. <laughs> and a lot of you were also... So damn close. Only one of you managed to get their predictions right. And according to my YouTube app, the comment wasn't edited. It was posted six days ago, which is about on average when I, you know, put the video up. So somehow you have gotten your prediction right for this weekend. But hey, I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you guessed this, but congratulations. You're the only one, like I said, who didn't edit the comment or post it like two days ago. <laughs> So let's go over what happened in the overall top 10, because when we get to number five, it's kind of wild, but let's go over the overall top 10. Number one was, of course, The Exorcist Believer. This isn't surprising, obviously. It's a new horror film. It's kind of like one of the big marketed ones. It's new Blumhouse. It's based off a franchise. So, you know, it was expected that it was going to be number one and that it would open pretty solidly. I think a lot of people are focused on a 400 million price tag for this thing, though, but that's not necessarily for this movie. The price tag on this movie, like the, the budget on this one is $30 million. So with an opening weekend of $27 million and worldwide they're already at $45 million, that is a pretty solid opening. Uh, they're $15 million away from doubling the budget for this and this film being considered a success. I think, though, a lot of people are harping on, they, they, they you know, uh, paid $400 million for the rights to The Exorcist, Blumhouse did, in order to make a trilogy. And I think as far as them making a trilogy and being really profitable. Like, I think they definitely were looking to recapture what Halloween did back in 2018 and what that kickstarted. And just looking at this number, I I think very obviously, I don't think that's what they have here. So I think this movie, this movie will be profitable for itself, but as far as they want to make enough money where each movie in this trilogy that they're going to plan on making, um, they want each of those to be, you know, uh, profitable, but they also want the whole thing. They want their money back, the 400 million that they spent for the whole thing. This isn't really a fantastic start for them. Like, you could see it potentially happening, and of course, it's going to double the budget, you know, it took to make this singular one, but it, it's it's just not a great look. At the very least, Blumhouse didn't make the stupid decision to put this out on the same day as its theater release on Peacock. You know, they didn't do the same, you know, same day theater and streaming release model. They're saving that for FNAF. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> um, but let's go over some other stats about this movie. For the opening weekend, I looked on the numbers.com and then I double checked on Box Office Mojo. There is no record as far as like what The Exorcist, the original film, and then Heretic, the sequel, made for its opening weekend. I can assume it was probably pr pretty low. It's obviously not even the same kind of model, you know, that we have today, so who knows how different it is. But as far as the other Exorcist films that are a little more recent, um, it has made $27 million over the opening weekend of Dominion, which is, of course, the Paul Schrader, you know, director's cut that never really saw the, f the light of day for a while, and then it did, but it wasn't finished, and barely anyone knew about it or, or, or has seen it. Um, it has an opening weekend 9 million higher than Exorcist Beginning and 18 million over The Exorcist 3. So as far as what we have here, this is the highest opening weekend for an Exorcist film. But as far as the overall runs, let's get into it. It has already outgrossed Dominion by 27 million. It is 2 million over Exorcist 2 and 3, but it's now stuck behind Exorcist The Beginning by 14 million. And it still has a long ways to go to get to the around 200 million total uh, that the first film's entire domestic run has, you know, and and this isn't even, you know, adjusting it for inflation. This is just straight out the market. If you adjust it for inflation, <laughs> it's it, it would be much higher. It would have a much higher hill to climb in order to get there, probably for all these other movies as well. Worldwide, as I said, it's sitting at 45, so 15 million off from doubling its budget. It has outgrossed Dominion by 45 million there. Uh, it's 2 million over Beginning and 20 million over Exorcist 2 II and 3, so it is the highest grossing Exorcist film worldwide save for the original film, where it needs 383 million in order to, to outgross that. And I don't think it's going to have that kind of hold, even though we are in spooky, spooky season, spooky time. It's, it's Halloween month. Um, and it, it probably will have a little bit of staying power just because it is Halloween and some people may be desperate to go out and see a Halloween movie. Um, obviously next weekend, there's only one big release. <laughs> so this might have some, some staying power in the middle of that, you know, 
Domination, and we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, no, it's not Dear David. That's like a limited release from what I can recall, and I haven't, I don't see it listed on my movie theaters <laughs> showtimes yet, so I don't even know if Dear David's going to make a big enough splash or if people know about it. That's a separate tangent. Point is, this movie is doing fine for its own, um, but that being said, as far as Blumhouse needing to justify spending four hundred million for the rights of this, and also making more of these, especially already battling some pretty bad press from uh, the Rotten Tomatoes critic consensus. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a great start when you factor in everything. As far as just a singular output, they will make some money back on this. Um, number two, we have Paw Patrol: The Mighty Movie. Actually, like, like I, I was wondering last weekend, like, is it going to be like it's going to drop massively or because there's not as much competition for family films that'll hold over it actually did hold over pretty solidly it made 11 million so now it's at a total of 38 million domestically so it's 2 million off from outgrossing the original film already so we'll be seeing that happen next weekend worldwide it is sitting at 87 million dollars so it's still 64 million off from the original film's worldwide run in that regard but as far as its 30 million dollar budget it is 3 million away from tripling that which is obviously tripling is much better than doubling so so they are in a pretty good spot, you know. I think I think I already heard something that they had greenlit another film, like a third Paw Patrol movie, to close out the trilogy. <laughs> um, if that's the case, you know, the numbers back this up. You know that there is at least some audience out there who will go and support these films. So good on them. You know, they're doing much better than <laughs> Exorcist Believer right now. I I wouldn't say much better. Like they're they're sort of in a in a similar-ish boat. <laughs> what am I saying? Let's move on to number three, because I don't really have much more to add about Paw Patrol. Let's move on to number three, which is Socks. <laughs> Saw X making $8 million, adding to a domestic total of $32 million. Um, it is now $9 million over Spiral and $5 million over Saw 6, so it needs $6 million to outgross Jigsaw. We will be seeing that happen, obviously, which that's good. To to outgross the previous two Saw films, at the very least, is, is a pretty exciting thing, <laughs> especially if you're a Saw fan who didn't really care for the approaches those two films took um worldwide it is sitting at 43 million so it's still it, it still has a ways to go to be like up there as far as like one of the biggest saw hits not just domestically but also worldwide but the fact that the budget is you know relatively low 13 million they have already tripled that budget they made four million over that tripling point and they're on their way to to quadruple it you know and that's 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 great for them you know that's exactly where they need to be you know they're already talking about making more anyway so this is a good spot it has outgrow spiral here by four million and it needs to outgrow saw six by 26 million so it's it's still got a ways to go i wonder if we you know if we keep looking at this down the line i wonder if it will be in the same boat that like the nun 2 is in where once it outgrosses something domestically it still outgrosses that movie worldwide and the lists are very similar we'll see um let's move on to number four which is the creator not really, like, it didn't really have, like, the biggest drop in the world, but that's only because last weekend it opened around 14 million, and now it's, like, 6 million, which is, I guess, technically more than half, but it's, like, man, to already open so low and then drop to this, like, it, you're still in the top five, but it's only because there's not much competition. I don't really see it holding over too well when the Taylor Swift movie comes in you know, dominates everything. I don't know. I really don't know. Um, and I was really, I was really curious to see like, well, maybe when it gets released in other worldwide territories, maybe it'll get a really big boost and that can still happen. But as of right now, with its 6 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of 24 million and worldwide only bumped up to 61 million, they are still 19 million off from crossing the initial production budget of $80 million, which I remember, you know, you 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 heard me talk about it, you know, that's a pretty modest budget for something that looks this good, you know. A lot of blockbusters, you know, like this with visual effects like this that are sci-fi films cost in the hundreds, upper hundreds or maybe 200 million. Sometimes they reach 300 million, but it's the ugliest looking movie you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm talking about Justice League obviously and maybe a couple others. The Flash. <laughs> but but you know, I, I thought for sure, like, well, this could be a good, you know, and maybe with some solid word of mouth, and even though if you just look at it numbers-wise on Rotten Tomatoes, it's in a solid spot, I think the people who actually see the movie are, I think the thing they're taking away from it is, yeah, it's okay, you know, and I think, you know, okay, but with a little bit of a positive note to it isn't really convincing word of mouth, and I, I think that's what's really biting the creator in the butt here, is that it's kind of divisive, even though the numbers on, like, Rotten Tomatoes are, like, a solid number, so if you just look at that, it's like, well, people like this movie, but if you really listen to a lot of people, especially on the internet, some people are pretty divided on this thing, so there you go, man, I, I really don't see this, you know, continuing to hold over well, even though 
that even though there's only one movie coming out <laughs> that could really take, you know, all the attention away and Dear David isn't going to make a splash, I, I just, I don't see this getting that big of a boost unless there's more worldwide places for it to be released where it's going to be big, but we'll see, you know, will it double its $80 million budget? I don't know. Will it outgross Gareth Edwards' Godzilla film? Well, domestically, it is behind that one by $176 million, and worldwide it's behind it by $468 million. So you tell me... <laughs> Now, get, let's get to number five, which was the shocker. I didn't think this movie would bounce up the way it did after it surprised the hell out of me last weekend. The Blind, the, the, the movie about the Duck Dynasty guy, it's still here. <laughs> it made $3 million this weekend, so now that adds to a domestic total of $10 million, and I still don't have a worldwide number for this thing, and I don't know what the budget of it is, but the fact that it's still here, and it's a Fathom event, you know, like, that's that's pretty big for this movie, you know what I mean, to, to kind of have a weird, not even too big, but solid enough staying power, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to say this is like the Terrifier 2 of this year, or anything like that, because once again, I don't have a budget for this thing, did it cost as low as Terrifier 2, maybe a little more, I don't know, I genuinely don't know, I still haven't seen the trailer, so I still don't know what the movie looks like visually, like, when I'd watch the trailer, am I like, oh yeah, this is a cheap movie, or if I watch it, I'm like, oh, it must be, it must have some kind of budget, you know what I mean, so I don't know, I don't know, but it, it held over. <laughs> if I remember correctly, and maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like this movie got number six last week, and also, maybe it got number five, and I'm just mistaken, but I feel like it literally just leaped up a spot, and speaking of leaping up a spot, you might think, well, number six is The Nun 2. No, it's a haunting in Venice. Still not close to doubling its $60 million, but, well, it's getting closer, but it still has a little ways to go, but it, it was able to finally kind of outpace the Nun 2's hold. Um, made $2.7 million, adding to a domestic total of $35 million, so it's $10 million behind Death on the Nile now, and worldwide, it has crossed over $100 million, sitting at $102 million, and it needs $28 million to outgross Death on the Nile. Maybe my theory on this movie being appropriate for October, and more people wanting to see it in October, maybe that will pan out, and it will at least double that $60 million budget. Or maybe I'm mistaken and it's going to just, you know, disappear off the face of the earth next weekend. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but I, I, I like that this movie is at least chugging along, you know. I, I like this movie. I think I've said it enough already. It's my favorite of the three Branagh, Hercule Poirot movies. They're all pretty consistent quality-wise, but this is the one that's kind of like, there's something just a little bit extra good about this that's special, that I haven't really seen Branagh try to do in some of these recent movies that I think is so cool. So, yeah, I'm, I'm glad to see it at least having some sort of staying power. Let's move on to number seven, which is actually The Nun 2. Here it is, making $2.5 million, adding to a domestic total of $81 million. It's still $3 million off from outgrossing Annabelle. Worldwide, it is sitting at $248 million, so $8 million off from outgrossing Annabelle. So Annabelle's the big reigning champ right now. It's probably going to outgross it at least by next weekend, and if not, the weekend after. But, you know, there you go. This movie that, you know came and <laughs> stick stuck around and it's slowly inching out of the top 10 you know it, it's made its money you know it's it's doubled tripled quadrupled it's 38.5 budget so good on them <laughs> i i genuinely i have nothing else to really add to this thing so let's move on to number eight which is dumb money making 2.1 million adding to a domestic total of 10.6 million and there is a worldwide total for this thing now but now it only bumps it up to 11.9, so it's still not even close to crossing the initial production budget of 30 million. So, uh, like I said last weekend, you know, this is just one of those movies where it's kind of like, I, I kind of, I enjoyed watching it in the moment, but afterwards I'm kind of like, I don't really remember specific things about it anymore. You know, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I, I think I, I think I liked watching it, but it's, it's not stuck with me. You know, I, I didn't get anything from this that I couldn't have gotten just by reading an in-depth, like, article about the events here, you know what I mean? And I wouldn't have to deal with some pretty annoying, like, pre if, I, if I gotta be honest, some pretty annoying jokes thrown in just because, well, we gotta make it a comedy, we got, we got Pete Davidson in here, and he's gonna riff, or whatever, you know? He's probably the worst part about that movie, too. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to number nine, which is the Equalizer three, making one point eight million, adding to a domestic total of eighty eight million. It's fourteen million off from outgrossing both the original and the sequel. Worldwide, it is sitting at one hundred and sixty seven million, so twenty five million off from outgrossing the original and the sequel. At this rate, it's looking like it'll probably end its run not as close, but close enough to getting to a consistent 
kind of <laughs> kind of run uh, equal to the other two movies. So I think it's it, you know it's it's been safe to say that you know the Equalizer is like the most consistent trilogy of all time because they're. <laughs> They they kind of all roughly feel about the same in a, in some ways and and um, the the box office runs are pretty consistent as well. So yeah, there you go. Congrats, Denzel and Anton Fuqua. And finally, closing out the video number ten, Hocus Pocus, the re-release for its anniversary, uh, actually made it into the top ten. I don't know how many people knew it was out, but apparently enough to get it into the top ten and outgross. Not just Barbie, but Expendables. <laughs> it's gone. Two weeks ago, Expendables was out in theaters, and now it's gone. Was it two weeks? I think it was exactly two weeks. Yeah, not three weeks. It was two weeks. <laughs> oh my god. Um, it made $1.5 million, uh, so now that adds to a domestic total of $45 million. Um, so and worldwide that only bumps it up to 46 million hocus pocus was I think famously one of those movies that when it came out in theaters It wasn't really appreciated until much later when it hit home video and was on the Disney Channel playing So when I say it still hasn't in these numbers um, Unadjusted for inflation. Uh, it still hasn't doubled its 28 million dollar budget It doesn't really matter because it's doubled it pretty much everywhere else. So yeah, you know hocus pocus There you go. There's still some love for this thing now it's time for the fun part, the predictions for next week's top five. Number one, pretty easy, Taylor Swift, The Eras Tour, the movie that's going to make a lot of film goers, I think, just skip <laughs> going to the movies that weekend and just let the Swifties go in and, and, you know, scream and holler and dance around. Even when they're not in the theater, they're probably going to come out and <laughs> into the auditorium in the halls and just interrupt people watching their movies. Like, genuinely, you could be in an auditorium on the other end of a movie theater, and you're you're far away from the Eras Tour movie, and you'll be like, ah, finally some peace, and then a group of Swifties will somehow manage to walk by your theater and overpower, just by walking by outside, overpower the noise in your theater, and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. So, it'll be interesting to see, you know, I, I think Taylor Swift is easily going to dominate because we've seen already the early, uh, the early, like, stats of, of pre-order tickets, but I do wonder how it will affect literally every other movie because I feel like people are anticipating the worst as far as like a theater going experience so we'll see and then number two I think will be The Exorcist Believer, number three Paw Patrol The Mighty Movie, number four Socks, and number five The Creator. Like I said I don't think the BuzzFeed movie Dear David is going to make any kind of splash but anyways what are your predictions for next week's top five? Leave them in the comments below and as always thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.